Hey everyone, you're watching Cam Loops Trout, and this is video 9 of our Countdown to Ice Off series for 2020. So, uh, I'm going to try and crunch a 15 minute video into 10 minutes for the sake of time here. Uh, so it's not too long, so bear with me. I'm going to be going a little bit fast here. So, we're just going to be tying in some pheasant tail fibers here. We got three of them in all of done and I just tie that in and then pull the feathers uh, back or forth to the desired length typically we like to go about the length of the hook or slightly longer for these mayfly patterns and we're just going to be tying up some uh, blue winged olive betis nymphs and this is the swimming variety of your um, typical mayfly nymph that you're going to be seeing on our interior still waters here in BC so as you can see, I've got those uh, fibers spread apart that I like to do with a crisscrossing motion in between each three so that they're not all clumped together. And now I'm going to follow through with my next step, which is tying in some copper brown uh, wire to the one side of the hook, um, followed by some uh, anti-static bag, which I've trimmed to a nice uh, tapered strip, uh, going thin from very big, which is going to help... Uh, follow the same taper I plan on doing for my body so we're just gonna tie that in and don't tie all the way back to those fibers because if you do and you wrap over them again you could clump them all back together I like to have all three going one in the middle and one to the left and right so next uh, is gonna be some micro chenille some uh, straggle string in a uh, dark green olive and I'm gonna tie that on the opposite opposite side of the hook because uh, we're going for a nice flat body taper and so in doing so I like to keep uh, both materials uh, the wire and the straggle string to uh, opposite sides of the fly so finally we've got uh, some uh, peacock curl and I'm just going to tie them in at the tips and I like to find some nice really bushy full uh, peacock curl for this fly because um, we're going to be using those fibers to imitate the gills that uh, protrude out both sides of the abdomen of the mayfly nymph so now that we've got that in uh, we're just going to come forward with our straggle string and this is going to be the material that we're going to be using to build up that body taper so use your best judgment when doing so you don't want your your body taper to be too fat we're not going for a fat fly uh, mayfly bodies are are fairly slim but you do want enough taper that you're going to be able to see a nice uh, pronounced uh, visible body taper so just come forward to about two-thirds of the way and then go back forward and back and do that process enough with the appropriate hook size that it, you've got the desired look that you want. So I'm tying on a size 14 curved nymph hook here with a 332 brown magic bead, uh, in case I didn't say that already. So um, just a few wraps is all that's necessary for this one. So I'm just gonna trim out the excess straggle string off the top, and now we're gonna tie in the peacock curl to both the left and right side of the fly. So you can pull that forward and secure in nicely. Uh, take a look at either side, make sure they're sticking out as you would uh, hope for. And if everything looks good, just pull them back and repeat the same process towards the rear of the fly using the wire with uh, one half wrap just to secure those in as well. Helps make the gills uh, that much more full. And then we're just going to pull forward again, filling in the back of the fly right on top as we're going to have a gap there. So now that you've got that, we're just going to take our anti-static bag material that we've cut into a nice taper there and pull that over the back and make sure it's nicely centered. Um, sometimes it, it helps to go just a little bit more to one side as when you wind forward with your wire it may want to pull it over just ever so slightly so now that you've got that where you like you can cut out your anti-static bag material and secure in nicely uh, everything with your your wire now so we're gonna wrap forward with our uh, brown wire here uh, size small and we're going to make about seven or eight body segments. Uh, 
you don't want too few uh, going with about seven or eight is pretty close to the naturals and creates a nice buggy look so once we get that we'll wrap again securing in our wire uh, nice and strong and then we'll we'll break that out and this uh, anti-static bag the flashback material it doesn't just make a, a great attractor pattern but it also does help imitate those uh, trapped gases that the mayfly nymphs will take on during their ascent uh, towards hatching to the top of the lake so um, we got dual purpose there and once everything uh, you're happy with it continue on and we'll move forward with uh, our pheasant tail now so we're going to pull our um, peacock curl back securing out of the way and making sure it's in nice and strong and now I like to take about a quarter inch uh, quite a few fibers there of our pheasant tail in the olive done and we're just going to tie it in in behind that bead and whatever you stick um, out past the bead we're going to reuse for the legs so uh, typically I like the legs to be about half the length of the fly body so um, secure in the proportions as needed and now we're just going to wrap forward with our peacock curl um, I like to do a one in one direction and then I'll switch over with the other one in uh, uh, the opposite direction which kind of crisscrosses the two locking them in a little bit more as the uh, uh, peacock curl is pretty weak uh, material for flies and we want these things to last as long as possible it's uh, just a uh, added precaution it, it doesn't help a lot but just anything you can do to help last a few extra fish is is great so now that you've got that take your your fingers and just kind of spread those uh, fibers apart 50% uh, to each side as best you can to the left and right and then crisscross through again just like we did with uh, with the tail there trying to part them as best we can and then in between where you've parted the the legs you can uh, fold forward with that pheasant tail for your wing case and your your thorax there and we'll just secure that off with our thread so uh, once you get that in make sure it's secured as, as best you can um, you don't want these things all popping out and uh, like I said the the materials here we're using the the peacock hurl and the pheasant tail are deadly fish catchers but they're not the most durable so it does help to um, once you get them um, all in the way you like take some UV resin head cement wh like whatever you got put it in soak it into those pheasant tail fibers and along the backside cure it uh, with your light uh, I, I use UV resin for just about everything now um, and it just helps gonna help make that fly last that many more fish so once you've got it all set um, try them out um, deadly deadly productive still water pattern for you to try in the in the spring right up until about June and uh, keep in mind that even some of the local lakes around here you may see uh, a lot more mayflies hatching before even the big chronomid hatches so definitely something you want to have in your box so um, I hope you all liked the video. Uh, I was talking really fast trying to get this thing down so you're not having to watch a 15 minute video. Um, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please show your support by uh, liking, subscribing, sharing, and uh, check us out on Instagram and Facebook and our website www.canlinstrout.net. I've got lots planned for it. Um, super busy right now with all kinds of things going on getting ready for our first year of guiding so uh, hopefully you guys all stick around thanks for watching I'm gonna try and pump some more out before ice off I got eight more to go I'm gonna really try and make that happen so cheers everybody tight lines and we'll see you on the next one thanks